two big snowstorms are possible, and in this video I've got the details on both of them. The first one as we head towards this weekend into parts of the Ohio Valley, as well as southern New England and northeast. Could New York City see some snowfall? Yes, out of that one. And then we've also got a severe weather and snowmaker possible as we head towards January 8th through 10th. Everything on both of these systems with timing, track, and snow totals in this video. And if you enjoy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the end. All right, welcome into this video. Let's talk about storm number one with the Euro model scenario here, the latest on the rainfall and snowfall sides of this. First of all, midweek this week, we've got a little bit of rainfall pushing through parts of the South Alabama, South Georgia, as well as Panhandle of Florida region. We've also got the system back out into the western U.S. that will eventually trek into the central United States, and that's what's going to be our next snowmaker here, especially in the parts of mid-Atlantic and northeast, where New York City could see some snowfall. Now, this starts off um, with high pressure off to the east as we make our way towards our Friday. Some snowfall at projecting out into parts of the high plains, especially parts of western Kansas, southern Oklahoma, as well as central Texas getting in on some showers, maybe even some rumbles of thunder out of this into the afternoon time frame on your Friday. Notice a new little area of low pressure system developing to help this out. Then it's going to head on off towards the northeast into the weekend, and by the time we make our way to our Saturday morning, we've got snowfall breaking out over parts of Kentucky as well as Appalachia, and then we've also got some heavier showers and storms into parts of the Carolinas, Georgia, and back into parts of Florida where we could see maybe a isolated disguise severe weather event may be set on up if we can get enough instability in that area, but definitely some heavy rain and some rumbles of thunder to say the least as we head into our Saturday night and into our Sunday. So this is the 6th going into January 7th. Look at how snow breaks out into especially parts of Ohio. We've got uh, central and southern PA getting in on some heavy snowfall. West Virginia, northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., as well as into Philadelphia. And then this quickly treks on up into parts of the New York City region where you'll, it looks like you'll be really close on getting either rain or snow. So we'll have to continue to monitor the forecast to see exactly what pans out there, but it could definitely break the snow drought. Heavy snow possible in Boston as well. And the Euro model, especially, not necessarily the GFS, but it shows that snowfall continuing on up all the way into parts of Maine. And then eventually our attention will turn to this system back on off towards the southwest. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. That's our second snowstorm. But continuing to talk about system number one, again, Saturday morning we've got snow and maybe some sleet into parts of higher elevations of western North Carolina, western Virginia, southern West Virginia as well. And notice there's this area I circled as well into parts of the Midwest. As, the, as well as the Ohio Valley. We'll see if we can get some snowfall to break out earlier there, and that could bring some heavier totals. But definitely looks like parts of Indiana, Ohio, northern Kentucky, southwestern PA, as well as parts of northern Virginia there, as well as into Maryland. As we go into our Saturday late day, this is when some snowfall is going to begin breaking out there with some sleet also mixing in at times on the southern end as warmer air pushes on in from the south. We could also see some snowfall impact parts of Detroit out of this, parts of Cleveland, Ohio. We could see this move through State College there in Pennsylvania. So definitely some heavier snow totals possible, but I think the main event is going to be as this wraps around, that wraparound flow here into parts of southern New England. Notice New York City right in some of those blue colors on your screen as we make our way Saturday night into our Sunday. Boston as well in the blues with the Euro model, so definitely promising for snowfall if you look at this one model. But of course there's other ones to look at, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but don't get your hopes up too much right now, but it does look like some heavier snow, definitely pushing somewhere through parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Also notice how maybe some of that warmer air moving in at the end of the system could bring a little bit of sleet that combats um, that northern flow. Now here's your forecast snowfall through January 9th at the European model. Yes, some of these numbers are quite high, especially in the parts of eastern West Virginia. And then also look at this. Um, we've got some of these very heavy totals into southern New York, northeastern PA, where maybe a foot is possible. But again, this is very preliminary. Um, it does look like the system has the capability to produce at least six inches of snow in many areas that it affects with that heavier snowfall. Um, and then into the northeast with the snowfall totals from the Euro, looking like, again, some of these, you know, those deeper magenta shades filling in around and just northwest of the city of New York. Um, city itself, you know, New York City itself looking maybe like three to four inches with this scenario. The GFS showing a similar deal as of now, but again, things are going to change. Um, these are just early snowfall totals, but it does look like heavy snowfall could progress into parts of New England as well. Only if you go with this Euro model scenario, and let me show you why the GFS isn't agreeing on that quite as much right now, and this is why. Look at this. We've got the storm system developing, again, as we make our way into our Saturday, and then, again, some snowfall breaking out over parts of Kansas, Oklahoma. That'll be good for some quick accumulation there, of course, but this box I just drew, that's where the main snowfall event sets up. Again, New York City right on the fringes of this. Um, it looks like, again, maybe a couple, uh, two to four inches of snow, maybe in New York City, and this is just a very early call on that. I'm not saying anything is set in stone. 
snowfall through parts of Pennsylvania. We briefly see the snow hit New York City and Long Island, but notice how this pretty much stays south of Boston as this low pressure system heads directly east instead of northeast, and pretty much there's some drier air on off towards the north that keeps the snowfall out of northern New England. So we really have to monitor that very closely, but the areas of spin certainly indicating that we're going to have a pretty strong system ejecting on out into the plains initially for this. That's going to be the low pressure system that kind of falls apart. The secondary low pressure system that helps us out is going to be the one that heads on up into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, creating that snowfall event. And look at how that just ramps on up as it progresses through the southeastern U.S. Um, with some very strong vorticity there. The polar jet stream not really interacting with this system much, um, and, and this system really having to do a lot on its own, but it does look like it will be a pretty strong one nonetheless. The last thing I want to look at with this system is the model blend, okay? We're going to see some snowfall over parts of the plains, especially ejecting out of the Mountain West. Look at all those totals in the Mountain West, by the way. Higher elevations getting a foot plus easily by this point as we head, you know, onward from January 8th into the 9th. Um, also, that snowfall in a parts of the mid-Atlantic into PA into parts of southern New York. Right now the models are agreeing on two to four inches there into parts of the plains and some higher accumulations there into parts of the northeast and southern New England out of the system. Closer to six to ten inches right now. So no foot plus total showing on a model blend. I guarantee we will see some likely if this con system continues to look like this though. So the summary quick shot of snow in central plains with the new low and then eventually there will be that new low again carrying that system up the east coast. Severe weather would be possible in parts of Florida and the southeast coast with this system. But the big um, thing that everybody's watching is that heavy snow in the parts of the Mid-Atlantic and New England. Now let's look at the system number two here with the Euro model radar. Look at the snowfall. Um, exiting parts of the mid-Atlantic and actually while that does so into the 7th, 8th, ninth time frame we're going to have a new system moving on out pretty much into the same areas we'll see that this first one move through we'll see a low pressure exit on out and head into the plains this will be bringing snowfall into parts of the Pacific Northwest through the four corners more accumulation there and then look at how these totals um, begin to add up in the snowfall department and even into parts of Nebraska in that colder sector of this system we'll have some stronger thunderstorms with some storm energy levels that have actually looked quite high on the models in parts of eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas, as well as western Arkansas and western Louisiana. So we'll watch those two sides of the system, the cold and the warm side, where there will be quite differing temperatures. That's going to create a pretty big wind field out of the system, I think, much larger than the first winter storm. Um, nonetheless, that first one could bring some stronger winds to parts of the east coast. And look at the snowfall adding up into parts of Iowa by this point. We've got got severe weather into the mid-south heading into the southeast and look at how dynamic this turns by Tuesday January 9th severe weather line possibly moving through Carolinas as well as Georgia and Florida and then we've also got very heavy snow forming up here into the Midwest parts of Michigan maybe s central and southeastern Wisconsin getting in on this as well we'll have to monitor the forecast as we get closely again this is very early the first system it's early to be talking about this one is way early um, but it is looking like this one is the stronger of the two as of now this this one's been showing up on the models even longer um, and that the snow could start at least start off as snow here in the parts of the mid-Atlantic mid as well as the New England zones. It does look like most spots though in the southeastern corridor of the U.S. will get rain only out of this system despite some of the snow showers that might wrap back around um, at the end. Those could briefly bring a quick shot of snow and then we'll have cold air wrap in behind this system. Now here's a 24-hour snowfall confidence. So day by day your snowfall confidence this is from january 8th through the morning on january 9th looking like we'll have a pretty nice swath of an inch plus of snow moving on out over parts of eastern colorado through parts of nebraska um, Kansas and then on over into Iowa and western Illinois, western Wisconsin. It looks like decent probabilities with a, a combo of models in the Euro um, category, the Euro ensembles, that's what the EPS is. And then notice how the snowfall confidence of an inch plus actually increases into parts of Michigan, the 9th into the 10th. Um, we also see this in Pennsylvania, New York. Some heavier totals might be adding up there, so maybe a secondary shot of some heavy snow. And then this works on off through New England, bringing snow um, into the zones I'm about to circle right here as well in some heavier accumulations there. So your summary of system number two, next big storm system has been looking likely for a while with northern snow and southern severe anticipated as of now. Definitely look like, like a pretty strong severe weather event, certainly possible out of this one. Early indications pointing to an Arklatex and Mid-South severe weather event during that January 8th through 10th time frame. I've already seen some instability levels 
getting into the spring-like category with warmth and instability. Again, very early to be talking about this, so it could change, and we might not end up seeing a severe weather event, but snow could move through the Midwest as well with this system. And then last thing I want to talk about with this one, cold air wrapping back behind it, 10, 15 degrees below average into parts of the central plains by the time we head towards January 10th or so, the 11th as well. Warmer than average air is out ahead of this system, so it's really definitely kind of a and dual sector system, right? The cold air wrapping around the warm air out in front of it because this first snowstorm that we're getting into the mid-Atlantic this weekend just not really bringing a cold air blast like this and with southeast um, at least 5 to 15 degrees below normal. Also cold back off towards the west as we head towards mid-January. So the zones to watch with these systems the first system, it's going to be maybe a low end severe weather threat in the parts of the southeast and Gulf Coast, especially with the snowfall band into parts of the Ohio Valley, um, northern Appalachia through southern New England as well. Maybe New York City getting in on some heavy snowfall. And then the second system, severe weather event looking pretty considerable possibly into eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas, the Arklatex, as well as the Mid-South, um, with snow into the Midwest and Great Lakes. But for now, that's all I got. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this valuable information. And that's it for this video. Have a great one, everyone. Here's the credits.